2023, what we call water quality impairment map, which is shown here. This is data that's been compiled essentially April through October of this year, showing what's been happening in our coastal water bodies. And um, you know, if you want a, a, a good scare, you can look at what's happening here for Halloween because the news is not great. Um, a lot of it's not surprising, but there are things that um, are unprecedented for Long Island. The map shows the occurrence of harmful algal blooms across Long Island, uh, dead zones, areas with oxygen less than what's regulated and um, required by the DEC of three milligrams per liter of oxygen, uh, and also fish kills and even a turtle kill across Long Island. And if you look at the data uh, and the data points, what essentially what it shows is that whether you were in Nassau County or Suffolk County, the East Coast, um, excuse me, the North Shore, the South Shore, the East End, um, there was no area that was spared from water quality impairments. Um, the map shows more than two dozen uh, toxic blue-green algae blooms in lakes and ponds, uh, extending from Montauk all the way in uh, to, towards Nassau County. And I'll highlight specifically an area that we can once again call the Dirty Dozen. Uh, in fact, in this year it's a Dirty Baker's Dozen, and that we had more than uh, we had 13 different water bodies on the South Fork of Long Island with toxic blue-green algae blooms. And as a reminder, these are uh, these blue-green algae blooms make toxins that are both neurotoxins and gastrointestinal toxins, um, strong enough to make dogs sick or even die. That's occurred before in the South Fork. Um, and so this is a very serious public health threat. And they're, of course, found throughout the area as well. In the marine water bodies, um, we had an unprecedented spring in that we had five different locations that had the occurrence of a toxic Alexandrian bloom that makes saxitoxin. And that led to the closure of shellfish beds uh, in places like Jockey Creek on the North Fork, Flanders Bay in, in, the, uh, in the Riverhead area, um, Terry Creek, Meeting House Creek, Shinnecock Bay, and Mauritius Bay. So we've never had in the history of Long Island ever had a situation where there's been five different locations with these um, paralytic shellfish poisoning events, and that's what we have to call them, because that can be the outcome uh, if people eat shellfish. And those areas were closed to shellfishing by the DEC because of the currents of these blooms. Uh, on the heels of those events in the spring, we had something called a dinophysis bloom that was in Marinches Bay as well. Uh, that causes diuretic shellfish poisoning, and again, that can be toxic to humans if people eat those shellfish. And once again, the DEC had to close all of Sea Tuck Creek to shellfishing because of that event. And, uh, and that event was actually record setting. Uh, we had prior the world record for a dinophysis bloom in Long Island with 2 million cells per liter. The event we had in Sea Tuck uh, Creek and Sea Tuck Cove uh, went on for more than a month and reached over 100 million cells per liter. Um, this is a very dangerous situation. And, and again, all of these occurrences, the blue green algae blooms, the marine toxic algal blooms are in near shore areas that are getting very heavy loads of nutrients and specifically nitrogen and specifically nitrogen from septic systems. And you know, beyond those events, as the summer wore on, we had a rust tide that began in July and extended all throughout the Peconic Estuary, all throughout Shinnecock Bay, with those, with those cells present all the way through into late September and even early October. Um, that rust tie is what we call an ichthyotoxic harmful algal bloom. That means it causes fish kills. Uh, and in the past, we've seen both the death of uh, fish as well as shellfish with the, the occurrence of these blooms. Uh, and then this fall, we had an unprecedented event that we had never seen before in Long Island. Specifically, we saw a new type of harmful algal bloom called Pseudonychia. This harmful algal bloom is, has a global distribution. Uh, it's very common on the west coast. Um, it's been seen before in the northeast. It's been seen on every continent outside of Western well, Republic, including Antarctica. Um, never seen before in New York. Uh, we saw, however, in August, started to see a high abundance of these cells. Uh, and this bloom of Pseudonychia that began in August, continued and peaked in September, went all the way into October. Uh, and I'll point out here, it was spread from about the middle of Great South Bay, all the way through Mauritius Bay and into Shinnecock Bay. Now this harmful algal bloom, unfortunately, is not the type that's harmless to humans, 
And in fact, it's very harmful to humans because the organism makes something called demoic acid. I'm not a medical doctor, but I'll just tell you that in your brain, you have something called glutamic acid receptors in all of your neurons. Glutamic acid helps make your brain and your neurons work. Demoic acid binds in place of glutamic acid and causes the death of synapses and neurons uh, in your brain. And so on the west coast, this leads to the death of marine mammals uh, and things like sea lions. And you know, we held out the hope that this, this event on the south shore would have been benign, uh, the organism being there but not the toxins. But we put out something called solid phase toxin, toxin trackers on the south shore and brought those back and measured and found, in fact, there was demoic acid being produced by this bloom. So this is a brand new type of harmful algal bloom to New York uh, and a new threat to public health. And I emphasize, if you look at the stretch of where we found this bloom, uh, it essentially started in Great South Bay, in the middle of Great South Bay, in the area that's unsewered uh, and extended all throughout that South Shore area. And if you look at that area, and in fact, you look at the South Shore, you can see a very strong demarcation line. The area of the South Shore that's sewered runs from about um, Islip all the way through uh, Nassau County. All those areas are sewered. You don't have um, household wastewater going into groundwater and then going into surface waters. Uh, that changes, of course, thereafter in all points east. And if you look at that map, you can just see the abundance of harmful algal blooms, all different types, uh, these toxic algal blooms, fish kills, and these dead zones. Uh, and I guess I'll just land on, because I haven't covered yet the dead zones, more than two dozen of those spread all across Long Island, all in areas that receive high levels of nutrient loading, uh, and also areas that are poorly flushed. Uh, and you know, the final thing to note that's kind of unique about the map is you, if you look at Long Island Sound, the happy news story of Long Island Sound is with the Long Island Sound study that led to the reduction in nitrate loading in the New York City area of 60%. The dead zone in the western part of Long Island Sound has shrunk significantly. Um, but what's been disturbing is in recent years, the, there was a very small dead zone that used to exist in Smithtown Bay. It would show up every year. No one was really sure why it was happening. But if you look at this year, that zone expanded significantly, and it probably is, I would say, four or five-fold bigger than it was just a few years ago. So that's a concerning trend, and I'll note that it's hugging the shoreline of Long Island and not present on the Connecticut side, um, which suggests that it's emanating, or its ultimate source is somewhere on this side of the sound. And again, we know that reducing nitrogen shrunk the dead zone in the western Long Island sound, we also know that this can work in the other direction and increasing nitrogen can expand dead zone. This has been shown all over the globe. Um, and that may well be the uh, consequence of, or the, the reason uh, that that central Long Island Sound dead zone has been expanding. But all in all, this paints a picture of the fact that there's a lot of work to be done on reducing nitrogen loads. Now, during the last decade, Suffolk County has made incredible strides on starting a uh, septic upgrade program, uh, both allowing for what are known as innovative and alternative septic systems, uh, and then developing a program for getting those systems approved, uh, and for people to get grants to get those installed up to $20,000 per home. Uh, so that's been an incredible stride forward and something that really this map emphasizes is so needed going forward. If we're gonna reverse the trends here, we need to address the largest source of nitrogen loading from land to sea across Long Island, uh, and that is on-site septic systems. Um, and so that's why I'm very excited to introduce our next speaker. He is a deputy county executive and water czar for the county, 